analyzing the data, we broke the groups into two good two categories. Wait, hold on. I'm going to start your work. Oh. Wait, let me. Okay, go ahead. All right. After analyzing Kickstarter data, we broke into two groups, goods and philanthropy. We looked at goods projects as projects that provide tangible reward to project backers. On the other hand, we looked at philanthropy-based projects as charitable donations that don't provide tangible reward. And what we were focused on is basically, over the course of Kickstarter, where has the growth come from? Either goods-based projects or philanthropy-based projects. And we have two different uh, measures that we can compare our goods and philanthropy-based projects. We've got dollars pledged per project and backers per project. So these are normalized measures which allow a comparison between our goods-based projects and our philanthropy-based projects. If you go up to the um, tip, and what we looked at was that, um, if you could reset that, click in the middle. Uh, Kickstarter really exploded in 2011 and 2012, and we wanted to see which categories provided the growth. And what we saw mainly were that the drivers were games, technology, and design. If you do control, you can click on. Yeah, I got it. Oh, so basically, you see that spike in terms of uh, both factors per project and dollars pledged per project, and the driver was really designs, games, and technology. But over the course of time, uh, philanthropy kind of flatlined. So if you reset the viz and compare all of your goods based projects back to your philanthropy, you can see that philanthropy is low, relatively low volume in terms of backers, based, uh, backers per project and then dollars pledged per project. And there's a full fit there too, so if you want to take a look at any given um, month or a year, what the uh, backers were for philanthropy and what the backers were for goods and projects or dollars. 